Good day, everyone. Um, so I, I've been lucky to uh, use OpenStack and, and operate and maintain for a while. Um, and yeah, for um, a big service provider in Europe and, and some enterprises, actually a mix of, of environments, uh, OpenStack and others. And I'm gonna share um, a track on, on operations and um, kind of details about um, a tool that I developed for, for the last year. Um, yeah, if you have any question, I'll, I'll leave a few minutes at the end. Hey. So I think it's not that easy to operate yet. Maintaining and troubleshooting is still um, um, some administration overhead, and you, you need some skilled personnel um, to operate. And I think the result is, uh, I mean, the cause is mostly focusing on fulfillment and provisioning, and maybe a bit less on, on, on operations. Um, this, the, this is the statement I took from Rirantis, um presentation uh, yesterday. Uh, a great guy explained um, running 5,000 nodes. And he said that um, most of the failing that happened was uh, because of uh, issues in networking. So I'm using networking charter here to explain, but I think it fits for, for others. Um, trying to back up my, my statement with some, some details. So that's the survey about IT spending a lot of time troubleshooting networking. And the lack of operational tooling coupled with, with OpenStack today. So I think the problem lies on obstruction. Um, I think by design, the, the product was developed with obstruction in mind, so the end user uh, or the end developer focus. So we have controllers talking to agents. Those agents are uh, vendor specific. The agents are actually doing uh, more hooks into something uh, we call workers. So this is an example of OVS. There is a neutron OVS uh, agent. Uh, he's doing the work with, um, with the net Linux namespaces, with the bridges, with OVS uh, itself. Uh, Nova is using libvirt, we all know that. So that is the, the design. Abstraction, here's an example. So the current API have an instance. That instance is uh, connected to a network. Uh, there is a port attaching, for example, the instance to the network. And there is a router. And guess what? When you look at the network, the status is active. So this is a nice view for uh, the end user. But I think operations, when they face um, issues on the network, they need more details. if you agree. So let's say you have a VM connected to a network, and that VM cannot communicate. So this is the stuff that, that we faced in reality for several reasons. Now, good people that with knowledge about how things work still needs to say, OK, what kind of distribution are we talking about? So this is an assumption here. The example that I'm going to take is from that distribution. With that mechanism driver and that type driver. That's the variance that uh, we have over here. I'll talk about that later. And also assuming you have a, only one region. So let's say you queried the Nova API and you know the mapping between instance and a host. 
That's several queries. And let's say you know the instance name mapped to the UUID. All right? So that's prerequisite. Um, here's a look into the list of availability zones. So let's say you know that the instance run on node 6, and you know that uh, it is in the Nova zone. You also know that the host is up. You know why? There is a smiley here. Try to parse that. Um, and then you look at hypervisors, right? And you see that the hypervisor is up. So you say, I'm, I'm good there. Uh, and also, Nova uh, is running over there. Then I'm asking Neutron, uh, show me the list of networks, and you have a UUID for the network that you see uh, from the API. Okay? Now, very recently, the network also belonged to that availability zone. That's really important, and that's a, a great change that happened in Neutron uh, recently. You also have a way to say, which agents are we talking about? So on node six, we're talking about open vSwitch agent. So I took this assumption, but now I know. Yeah, and this is available since Liberty. Um, then you, need to know which type of overlay tunneling or type driver is used. So here's a nice command that Neutron gives you back. We're talking about this overlay. So now I know for sure. And also, I know that this network and this instance have some services running. So it's the DHCP service and a layer three service um, helping this network. Now, where those DHCP service and router service is running? Note that I'm not saying uh, OpenStack too much today. Um, this, this stuff, I'll, I'll show you why I'm saying that later. Um, so here is how I know where those services are running. So node one, all right? runs, in this case, the namespace for DHCP, metadata, and layer three agent, which is the router. And again, they are alive. See the smileys. Moving on, I'm saying there are more details in MariaDB than, that are not exposed to the native OpenStack API. Here is an example, a short list. We see Cisco details, if it's Cisco, Arista details. We see BGP details, if it's used. We see DVR details, HA information, mapping of ML2, uh, VXLANs and GRE or Geneva, whatever, um, neighboring details, vendors of Neutron, are just pushing it into MariaDB because they have no other mean to expose it. That's a fact, right? And there is no, well, depending on the vendor, the vendor might give you an API to get those details, that specific vendor, not OpenStack. Now, if you ask me this question, uh, do you really need that? Uh, my experience, say yes. It depends. So sometimes it's so simple that maybe you can get away without it. But many times you do. So you're SSHing to node six where the instance is running. And why you do that? Because from my experience, Database is not enough, not enough information. Mostly real-time information. So SSH into node six and asking libvirt the list of instances. By the way, that name that you see over here 
is the libvirt name. It's not the Nova name. So let's say you know how to map it. That's what I said before. And let's say that you look into the XML of that instance, and you know that Nova created it, and the Nova name is VM200. That's the assumption that we said. We're talking about this VM, all right? So looking further into that XML, there is a section about the virtual NIC. So the virtual NIC of that VM is Virt.io type. I'm going to skip the details of Virt.io. Uh, I only have 40 minutes to talk about this stuff. Um, and we have a MAC address assigned. That's cool. And I know we're talking about an interface name TAP something because that's the mechanism driver naming convention. And I'll show you others later. And there is a bridge, a Linux bridge with that name connected. All right? If you do ifconfig on a node, a hypervisor that is part of OpenStack, you will find, you'll find tons of those taps. Just tap there, tap there. Mapping the tab to the instance is inside libvirt XML files. All right? Then you look at the bridge, at the Linux bridge. Here's a command uh, for the Linux uh, mechanism, and here's the, the bridge name that you found in the XML, and here's two interfaces attached to this bridge. This interface is the top interface of the instance. And this is a name for the bridge port attached to that instance. All right, so just like in a legacy switching environment, you have the, the PC and the port, that's the top. And then you have the port on the switch. That's the QVB in this case, the bridge interface. Now, you ask yourself, OK, that's the port that OpenStack is talking about, the port of that instance. Awesome. I found what it means in, in operation, in reality. All right? And that's the port on the bridge. So actually, the port consists of two sides now. And you ask yourself, the bridge is up? Is it up? Is it running? Leave that thought for now, because I'm not going to talk about how you monitor this object, just about the fact that it's there and running, all right? for now. Then, because you learned that we're talking about the OVS mechanism driver, I'm learning about that, and I know that there is some OVS commands that I, that I can use. Now I'm asking the OVS system, show me uh, the data path inside OVS. And here I see some interesting stuff. I see QVO. See, it ends with FF2C, just like over here. So I got it. The bridge port is connected to the OVS port number six. Port number six on OVS. And here's some details about packets going in. What comes next? So that's another abstract, uh, abstraction from the port, that the OVS port number six is there. Now, looking deeper into the controller of OVS, uh, this is a big list. You see something called integration bridge, BR int. That's a common name, by the way. And you see that QVO port that I was just talking about getting something important called, uh, called a tag. So a tag is the way the OVS system isolate one a network, one customer from the other. Uh, inside the OVS system, instances attached to same tag can communicate with each other. They are sitting on the same network. Different tags, different networks, all right? But now I know it's tag one. And I see some overlay tunneling going on from this node, number six, to some other places. I'm asking myself, where are those endpoints going? 
So there is a bridge running the tunneling. There is a bridge um, for VXLAN. There is a bridge called integration bridge for the instances themselves. And that's another representation of what OpenStack see as a port. Looking at MariaDB, you see a list that is important. Uh, which VXLAN endpoint attach to which host, to which node? All right, so I know this IP is assigned to node number one, this IP is assigned to node, node number six for the VXLAN overlay, all right? I'm assuming there is no routing in between. So you see the IP on the same network, uh, not several hops away. Uh, sometimes there are several hops away and you need to find out how those are routing to each other. If you have a region, that's why I said region one, if you have other regions, like one in New York, one in uh, San Jose, guess what? There are more details here. Um, now, I'm looking into who on the host is holding that VXLAN endpoint. So I learned it's 192.168.2.2, but which system or which interface on the host holds that IP address? For Mirantis Liberty case, it's a bridge called BR Mesh. For Canonical, it's a bridge called Juju Zero. Now, that bridge sitting between my overlay tunneling and the physical network, how do I know that? Another command asking about the bridge for the overlay tunnel telling me it's connected to some physical NIC ENS 160.103. What's that? Anybody knows? All right. This is a VLAN connecting just the VXLAN endpoint to the physical network. Repeating that, connecting just the endpoint of the VXLAN to the physical network. That's the implementation, all right? How do I know that? Very easy, look here. VLAN, raw device, ENS160, and that's the ID. Now, more details. We left node six from that instance. Now, I'm, I'm thinking maybe this instance is not uh, getting an IP address, for example. Now, where's the DHCP server? The DHCP server is running on node one. That's what I uh, saw on the, on the DB, right? So, now, in the database, I know looking closely, in neutron DHCP binding table, not exposed in the OpenStack API, um, which network have which DHCP UUID? The DHCP UUID in node one is this. Because if you go to node one, the namespaces, and you do IP net NS enter, you'll find a bunch of them. One pair network. If the network has DHCP, doesn't have to be. So I'm looking at one of them, and I'm executing, well, I'm executing a command inside the namespace, the correct namespace, just doing IF config. Guess what? The DHCP server has a TAP interface. All right. And that TAP interface is not connected to a Linux bridge. Why? Because this is Mirantis 8.0. That's why the DHCP server is connected directly to OVS and not through a bridge. And here's the proof, all right? That's the TAP interface on port five on OVS that we saw on the namespace, the DHCP namespace. 
Uh, here is interfaces QR, QG. Anyone here has a knowledge about what is QR, QG? Router, correct. So there is a router to get out of that network. So anyone on that network that wants to get out to the other networks or to the internet or whatever goes to that router. That router has two interfaces. One is called QR, is connected to the network internally. One is QG, it is connected to the internet gateway. I'm not leaving that space yet. Again, looking at the bridge inside OVS, here's the QG, QR, top interfaces, looking at the tag. Awesome, tag one was assigned. Did I find places where the wrong tag was assigned by OVS? Yes. And guess what? You query the OpenStack API and it's gonna say network is active. Because of abstraction, all right? Um, Here's a list of the VXLANs tunneling in node number one. I moved a bit quickly here. Um, and then, again, there is this uh, BR mesh interface connected to the correct VLAN on that node number one to have that communication in place. I'm not going into management networks, storage networks used by Sinder or Ceph or whatever that are used for um, hosts communicating with their disks. Okay, imagine the networking going on in Neutron also provides hosts to connect to their storage disks. So, do you think it's important? Um, so, here's what I call virtual services. So, DHCP, router, firewall as a service, VPN as a service, you name it as a service, all the VNF stuff. They are all different types of, they are not really instance. So, let's call them virtual service. And the virtual service VNIX also have ports. You see that on the router ports. And here's the query for the router namespace. And here's the QG and QR stuff that I referred to. See, here's the IP assigned to this router. Guess what? It should be the gateway IP address of the instance if everything in Neutron was programmed correctly. And here's the integration bridge that I showed you before with the tags and everything. Okay? So, if you ask me what if we're talking about different distribution, like a Red Hat or an Apex or whatever, what if we're talking about different mechanism driver, different type driver? Guess what? The discovery of how things are connected gonna be different. The logic of how a human being administrator will find out what's going on, the, that logic change. So here's an example of a program, uh, DPDK FDIO, uh, a virtual switch that is not OVS, it's a VPP, it's uh, uh, in, uh, running in user space. In that case, inside the instance XML file, you will find an interface called vhost user. Not a tap, da da da, but a vhost user something. With a MAC address, with a type driver, virtio, maybe a couple of them, depends what this device is. And here's the command to map the virtual NIC on that particular virtual switch to the instance. Inside, the, the interface is named virtual Ethernet, something, something. Here's a command that shows you the bridge. It's not a Linux bridge, 
internally it is called bridge domain 2. And here's the command to map, uh, to show the interface and the packets coming in and out from the instance. Here's the bridge and you see learning and some details about if that bridge is up in this mechanism driver. And here's the mapping to some physical interfaces. Here's 40 gig interfaces or whatever. Um, and in this particular mechanism driver, um, you know where it is going out. Of course, I skipped all the tunneling stuff and, and VLAN stuff and all that. Just give the point here. So till now, we were just talking about one VM. Let's say your environment has more than that. Right? And let's say your environment has a feature called HA. What happens there? And let's say your environment is working with distributed virtual routing, not the, 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 the standalone router in Neutron. Guess what? Discovery time multiplies by number of VM, multiplies by number of, um, well, HA multiplied by two because there is a couple of them, a couple of DHCP servers backing up each other. One is uh, active, the other is standby. You need to find which one is active. You need to go there and find. All right, so this is what I call discovery. And discovery is important, I think, because it's the baseline for troubleshooting. And post-discovery comes actually fixing the problem. And I'm coming back to why all this stuff is affecting the time spent for troubleshooting and maintenance. So, yeah, that's bitching. And now do we have a cure? Um, so I've been spending the last year um, uh, being part of a team developing something that we called Calypso. And in general, uh, well, of course, it's going to be open sourced soon, in a few months. Um, the point here is networking operations API. So an API focused on cloud operations, not the cloud user. And this API should expose everything that I showed here and many, many other details per vendor in a model way uh, Notebound. Uh, at least start to, if you agree. Just start looking at that. All right? Um, here is some projects that we uh, might be attaching to. Uh, we wanted to move faster, so we spent some time alone, but those projects are, uh, can, can totally be integrated. Um, now, inside this, the, the system, you have discovery logic, pair, pair environment, let's call it, distribution mechanism driver, type di driver, that's an environment. So pair environment discovery logic and uh, visualization of that and then monitoring of each object in the system. That's a baseline for doing some more sophisticated analysis. And I'm saying point is visibility equals predictability equals uh, overall stability. So for maintenance and troubleshooting, uh, allowing inventory discovery, reporting, visualizing that, and monitoring each and every object all inside the same graph. Here's the object model that we have. So we added this to what we think Operation API needs to have. It needs to have some kind of a virt virtual service like DHCP and others, virtual NICs, virtual connectors because it's general either a Linux bridge or other type of bridge, VMware might call it port groups, whatever. Virtual edge, the device that actually connect the physical to the virtual. Here's examples like Midonet, OVS, others. Physical NICs, imagine physical NIC is not in OpenStack API. 
overlay tunneling endpoint because it can be a VTAP, like a VXLAN endpoint, but there is a GRE endpoint that has Geneva endpoint, so in general, let's call it overlay tunneling endpoint. And of course, there is the virtual topology that is the fact, what's going on, and there is the kind of the policy topology which upper layer application is actually seeing, all right? Uh, here is it in the, in the OpenStack model, so region, zones, host, and everything. Uh, you see where, where those seats, V services in uh, particular plugin, virtual NICs, one-to-one uh, -one relationship with the network port that is part of a project. The host is running all those objects inside. Uh, I think it's very adaptive. Uh, we found that many, many vendors, actually we tried it against 12, have the same concepts. So it maps one to one. There is always a bridge. Call it da 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 something. And it does what it needs to be done because we didn't invent the wheel here. So Calypso Discovery has pair environment scanning logic with hooks into OpenStack API, OpenStack database, and command line. We don't want to do that. Priority one, we want API. Priority two, we go to the database. Priority three, we go to the command line. If we get the data that we need from the first one, we're fine. I think it will take time for things to move into API, right? Then we have links analysis, analyzing which object is connected to which object based on the discovery. And then we have something for the UI called clicks, uh, and it is focal point equal links. So which focal point are you interested in equals what would you see on the screen? Then, this environment is dynamic. One big environment that I've worked on uh, in, in, our, in a WebEx operation based on Mirantis, um, because of CLI parsing and database, mostly CLI parsing, and because the data was missing today, initial scanning took us like 17 minutes. We couldn't help it. Uh, it's all about SSH parsing and stuff. We want to get it from API and trim that to seconds. Of course, we need that operations API. But let's call it first install, first discovery. Then changes. So how do I take changes? We have listeners per environment. Believe it or not, the messages in different environment varies. So we have listener to the RabbitMQ message bus of OpenStack, getting those uh, uh, changes going on, and based on those changes, updating the inventory in real time, or maybe doing an object scan. So not scan everything again, but just a particular object to find what changed, like maybe just the instance name or things like that. Then we integrated our monitoring module with Sensu. So we chose Sensu as the framework, and we have Sensu client on each and every host. We can configure that for you. When I say configure, monitoring needs a lot of configuration. It's not just putting stuff there. Like, for example, you want to do a ping from a certain source IP address to a certain destination IP address to see if it works. The detail of which IP address to which IP address is from the inventory. So we take stuff from the inventory, pushing it into Sensu checks. There's a lot of details there, all right? We wrote 10 different Sensu checks for our 10 different virtual objects that we discover in the system. Sensu is giving this back to us. We wrote 10 different Sensu handlers. The Sensu handlers in Calypso are pushing the result in real time to the Calypso inventory. So now you have not just details and topology and, 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 and um, uh, like dependency model, but also stat status, all right? It's up, it's down, walking or not, okay? Uh, we have a, an interface port into time series database giving you information about, okay, how was my topology and health uh, last Thursday? And compare to today. Finally, visualization was a big part. We investigated, we found a really cool algorithm to illustrate the model of clicks and links that we have in the system and do it uh, intuitive and in real time. 
Here, all our modules are container based. So last time I checked, installing Calypso is 10 minutes. Pulling from Docker Hub and running. Each and every container. Discovery, monitoring, uh, our database based on Mongo. Yeah, we have an API, that's the operation API offer that we can start with. The UI and the bus. Once we have an agent for operations API, you can simply take our image over here and use it right now as an agent. We're gonna save all the SSHing and stuff. Here is what we tested against, all right? A big list of dis uh, distributions and mechanism driver, some in QA phase. If you don't see the variance, it just means we didn't test it. This proved us that our model fits and uh, we can gather the data. Multi-environment, you might look at other systems that are not OpenStack. We also have a mapping for that to container-based, uh, bare metal, and, and even VMware. I want to move into a video to show you how the system look like. So you, you're going to add a new environment. This is where you're going to tell the system uh, which distribution. Th this is the list that we guarantee supported, which type driver and which mechanism driver. You're going to tell us if you want us to, to deploy monitoring. That's the only write that we will do because everything else is a read. We can create just the files and you take the files and you deploy them on Sensu. Here's the scanning going behind the scenes. The scanning actually fill the inventory and you see the details about the scanning and what's going on. Here's the link types that you're interested about. You wanna see this object connected to that object. Some people just wanna see the horizon-like instance connected to a network, awesome. But then you wanna zoom in so you have a click saying, okay, if this focal point is clicked on the, on the UI, Here's the list of links that I'm gonna show you on the screen. We think that this is really intuitive and help you kind of um, make the UI fit your needs or network operating system. By the way, it was built for big screens. Here's the messages from the RabbitMQ and we have a link on the message taking you exactly to the point in the graph where this stuff happened. Here's one message. Uh, we have the, the body for you that you can take a look. Uh, here's a Stratoscale environment. It's not really OpenStack. It's, um, it's a high convergence, uh, 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 but it fits our model and it has the OpenStack API. So we use that to demonstrate. And here's how fast we guarantee this graph generation saves 90 95% at least of administration overhead to find that out, guarantee. So this click took us to this bridge, for example, and here, I'm sorry, it was built for a big screen and that algorithm has a big line between objects. I can make it smaller with our JS uh, algorithm. Here's open this switch running on that, on that switch. Uh, we're moving to Amirantis um, uh, version nine here running like 11 instances. Here's the SpaceX uh, network. Here's how the network looks like. So you can zoom in and out. The network is a big, so the network is active because it's blue, all right? Not because OpenStack API is saying that it's, it's, it's active. Here we say what the network is about, all the top interfaces, all the bridges, all the interconnection between those guys, uh, um, all the, um, uh, OVS overlay tunneling, all right? Uh, here, here is the status. I'll, I'll show you next how the status change from error to an up state. Here's the BR mesh that we saw before uh, connected to uh, the port and the physical NIC all the way down to the network. So the focal point of this particular graph is the network. This is why you see all those branches going on uh, in the environment. Um, here's the other side, like one VM on that side, one VM on the other side. 
Again, you don't have to zoom in and out and, and just browse around. It just depends on the way we configure the algorithm. I just did that a couple of days ago. Um, so we find complex interconnection. You have a search engine in, the, in our uh, uh, system just against our inventory. So you can in real time ask for, I don't remember what's the name of this router. Here's changes in real time. See, the router name is router da 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 04. Now something in OpenStack changed that name to something else. See, it changed in real time. No need to refresh the browser. Um, here's a big environment. We call it Thundercloud. It's an internal project uh, that runs a lot of um, nodes and, and, and instances. This is canonical based, by the way. So in that environment, uh, we have that uh, search demo. So we, in this example, I'm searching for something that starts with this name, filtering, and then choosing that particular focal point, which is an instance, for example. And guess what? You will get to the graph that shows you the pieces connected to that instance. Here's monitoring. Look at that. It's error, and suddenly it's OK. It's a ping that we do over, over on the overlay. We have also a trace route. So you get information about, like for example, round trip delays and things like that. That's part of the sense to checks that we wrote in the system. Uh, you've seen that before. Here is an example of analysis. So let me stop here for really just a second here. Um, so just to prove a point, we ran some statistic collection using CollectD, uh, just like the other guy uh, just uh, explained before, um, and, and Logstash as well, sending packets from a certain mechanism driver to a big data environment. Uh, this uh, environment analyzed the packets for something that we call throughput per session. So one instance talking to another instance, of course, can have multiple sessions. Those samples over here is uh, um, kind of uh, an example of traffic for like a backend database. So this is what was a proof of concept that we did. And the result of this traffic, like average throughput over time, come on, please continue. Anyway, translates to uh, ability on the UI to choose a session from a source to a destination. And here's the graph that we have to show the total throughput over time from this source to this destination. Here we're using MAC address, but we have the context of uh, mapping that to instance name, of course. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? I can take some questions if you, if you have. Yeah, awesome. Just a quick question. On, yeah. on that last graph, yeah. you were using, uh, were you using flow data to get the uh, yes. volume between? It, it's a script that, that we wrote to get this flow data, yes. OK, so um, it's like, like NetFlow or IPFix, as well. That open flow. Open, OK, thank you. Any more questions? Thank you very much, everyone. You, do you map bare metal stuff oh. too? So bare metal is pretty easy, yes, absolutely. And there's no value there. I mean, we have the networking management systems that can do that. It's just the point between the end of the virtual side, the physical NIC, and then other systems handling like leaf and spine things, giving us this data, yes, no problem.